Okay, so our last presentation will uh, go through another example up in Oceanside. Uh, Phil Armstrong uh, with the Lightfoot, uh, Lightfoot Planning Group. He's got 30 years of professional experience as a licensed landscape architect. Uh, Phil's approach to project design applies creative and sustainable strategies that endeavor to realize a project's full potential. As senior landscape architect at the Lightfoot Planning Group, Phil oversees staff resources and provides insight and support for a variety of project markets in both private and public sectors. Phil is the uh, new incoming president-elect for ASLA. Got roped into that one, huh? <laughs> um, it's a varied experience of uh, shepherding projects, including people within ASLA here soon. Uh, from concept through construction includes development support of residential communities, design of K through 12, community college campuses, and uh, Lightfoot's planning staff on a, a variety of master, master planning and specific planning projects. With that, Phil, if you'd like to go through your example. Great. Thanks very much for the introduction, Mike. Uh, I'll, I'll try to move it along as quickly as possible here. Um, my case study today is Mission Avenue improvements in the uh, city of Oceanside. I just want to walk you through really the aspects of not only the uh, Green Street and sustainable strategies we did, but um, how the design team and uh, our stakeholder groups were able to um, uh, leverage uh, design strategies and transforming a gray street into a green street into now a great street. Um, as you know, uh, Oceanside is the largest uh, municipality in North County and Mission Avenue is really the de facto gateway into the downtown core. And um, with downtown Oceanside's close proximity to uh, Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, a lot of the downtown businesses were usually catering towards uh, personal services, some desirable and some maybe not so desirable in years past. So uh, Oceanside downtown years ago was really not a, uh, a desirable place to stay or linger after dark. Um, I think over the last 20 to 25 years, the city's uh, redevelopment strategies uh, has garnered uh, some level of success, and I really think that uh, the Mission Avenue project was one facet to uh, aiding to that downtown renaissance. So Mission Avenue before was a four-lane uh, uh, arterial that ran from I-5 on the west, uh, headed east towards the beach. It uh, really was known as the Speedway in a number of cases to the locals. Uh, our project area focused on a seven block area from Horn Street near Oceanside High School and the freeway and continued westbound down to Cleveland Street, almost to the beach. Um, in 2009, our team was selected with uh, Kimley Horn and Associates as the lead. They were responsible for civil and uh, traffic engineering. My firm, Lightfoot, uh, was responsible for landscape architecture and urban design. I think the design team uh, realized right away that we needed the input of additional stakeholders, so we reached out to the City of Oceanside community development folks in both engineering and the planning divisions, as well as businesses uh, represented by the local chamber and Main Street Oceanside. Um, although the project vision was rather modest at first, uh, just to improve traffic circulation, walkability, revitalize the uh, Mission Avenue corridor, all benefiting, at the end of the day, businesses, residents, and uh, visitors. The uh, design team entertained our collective goals of vehicular circulation, a better pedestrian experience, improved bikeway circulation, improved stormwater, and add to the urban forest and greenways. So, Coupled with those two visions and goals, it was a natural outgrowth that we would uh, embrace the strategies of complete and green streets, low impact development, and green infrastructure. So with that, our design team and the stakeholders had a vision. Uh, our mantra was healthy streets, healthy sidewalks, and healthy businesses. Uh, we began our design efforts basically building on past efforts that the city had uh, uh, obtained through uh, the walkable community communities documents, uh, input from the city landscape ad hoc uh, reports, bicycle master plans, the circulation elements, general plans, 
different visioning studies and uh, record drawings that were available to the city. We then began uh, evaluation of existing con conditions. Um, we uh, reviewed utility infrastructure, pavement conditions, pedestrian use and circulation, the uh, existing condition of landscape and uh, trees, and basically the overall aesthetic of the roadway corridor. Kimley Horn then began their traffic study in evaluating um, uh, circulation level of service models. We looked at uh, four lane, two way modeling as well as taking the street down to uh, a single one way direction road diet and even entertaining roundabouts in lieu of signalized intersections. Um, we worked very closely again with the design team and stakeholders in conducting a number of workshops and analyzing uh, the data gathering that we had uh, taken and then uh, helping to develop uh, a series of alternatives for uh, design solutions. So we vetted a total of five design alternatives. They basically were from minor improvements in roadway striping, some landscape improvements to more uh, exotic uh, road diets, taking Mission Avenue down to uh, two lanes in single direction and using a return couplets on the adjacent blocks. Um, we narrowed uh, those design alternatives to a preferred alternative, which was option three, which basically takes Mission Avenue to two lanes westbound one way, and then uh, does a return couplet on Seagaze Drive eastbound, which is uh, the next block over to the south. So the preferred alternative provided a greater level of service. We actually were able to add parking. It widened the sidewalks from 5 feet to 22 feet. Uh, this provided um, uh, uh, additional opportunities for outdoor dining by the merchants, um, outdoor merchandising opportunities for retail, uh, low impact development opportunities, and it maintained the traffic flow from I-5 to the beach. It also uh, increased bus efficiencies actually from uh, through the corridor to the transit center in and out of downtown. So we uh, did a number of visual sim simulations uh, looking at the existing conditions and the proposed improvements for presentation purposes created a number of uh, concepts showing both softscape and hardscape conditions, uh, street crossings, and other treatments. Uh, our design objectives was uh, basically to, with the widened si sidewalks, we were able to provide decorative paving, outdoor gathering and dining areas, bulb outs at the intersections for safer, safer street crossings, greenway and biobasin planters and buffers, we were able to preserve uh, a number of the mature palm trees that were skyline palms and additional uh, um, improvements to the urban forest. I think one of the most interesting aspects to the design is that we included reverse angle parking. And um, I think a lot of us as uh, designers and policymakers are often accused of being on the bleeding edge rather than the leading edge of technology. Uh, but I think with our relationship uh, that the design team had with the stakeholders is that the city of Oceanside really uh, championed this design solution and ran with it. So that helped uh, basically sell this to the general public. Uh, so both the city and the design team were uh, major cheerleaders for this. So obviously with reverse angle parking, it improves uh, v much vis more visibility when exiting the parking stalls, uh, decreases collisions, uh, provides safer loading and unloading of passengers and cargo, and even aids to traffic calming. Uh, of course, we addressed landscape concerns through both the uh, additions to the urban forest, uh, greenway plantings, we implemented low impact development and green street strategies, uh, added curbside stormwater landscaping. These were acting as separators between pedestrian areas and added to curb appeal for motorists going down Mission Avenue. Uh, 
most of the plant selections were for you know form and function, and a emphasis was placed on a balance between ornamental, native, and adaptive plants. Um, looking at street lighting, uh, we took our cues from uh, additional areas that were in the urban core using thematic decorative standards. Uh, we incorporated flexible options for banners, uh, hanging pots, and additional outlets for seasonal and uh, thematic lighting, and also lighting in front of businesses for people to uh, you know, create ambiance and for people to linger in the evening. Uh, street furnishings, likewise, uh, have had uh, an attempt to commonize a, a, a common design theme to reinforce uh, other areas of the downtown core and Coast Highway. Uh, we incorporated uh, common themes with the trash enclosures uh, and receptacles, uh, benches, and urban furnishings. For the hardscape and paving ground plane, we again took our cues from the downtown core elsewhere along Coast Highway. Uh, there, uh, typically it's uh, gray concrete. We used gray concrete with a two by two score grid pattern. Uh, most of the other crossings in the downtown core consist of uh, concrete pavers. Um, since we are doubling the uh, crosswalks sometimes with ribbon gutters, it found it was impractical to, to achieve this, so we, it, did uh, colored brick colored concrete with a one by one grid square uh, type pattern. Uh, we incorporated additional decorative pavings around the tree wells and um, once the project uh, concept designs were uh, complete, we conducted a number of public outreach um, meetings. And, you know, of course, like other municipalities, there's uh, residents and um, city fathers have their, their hot buttons, and Oceanside is no exception there. So there was some controversies that we had to go through, uh, conduct an awful lot of public outreach. Um, but again, I think the, the design team, along with our stakeholders, were able, were able to tell a story and walk everyone through of how we came upon, you know, alternative three as our best option, and this was the best design for the, the street going forward. Uh, it was ultimately def uh, adopted by the city council, and then we moved into the construction phase. Um, you know, obviously, uh, maintaining a active vehicle way during construction presents its own challenges for uh, safety and circulation. So we had an extensive uh, pre-construction meeting with not only the design team and construction team, but other stakeholders with SDG&E, NCTD, the local transit authority, and uh, residents and businesses themselves. So there was an extensive amount of outreach during construction, making sure that businesses knew what uh, phasing plans were going to be in store. I think I believe there was a total of four different construction phases of the project in isolating different parts of Mission Avenue during construction. Um, I just want to run through a couple of slides right now, just the past images of the, of the project. You can see that uh, it really is, it was a dog's breakfast between landscape treatments, uh, paving types, um, the amount of uh, furnishings that kind of were a mishmash to uh, the built environment right now. These are the uh, stormwater uh, bio basins and landscape strips. The additional paving and uh, areas for retail display out on the sidewalks. And we were rewarded by our efforts uh, a couple of years back. This was a 2015 project of the year for APA, uh, APWA, American Public Works Association. And last year we were a merit award for uh, the ASLA uh, awards. So I thank you very much. Thanks very much.